They don't care who you are, where you came from, what you look like. There's a standard. And if you meet that standard, you've got, you're going to unlock a, a world of, of excitement, glory, and service. Uh, and if you don't, so the, the seals have done a great job of making things very clear for anybody that, that steps foot, uh, into buds, into buds training. Gotcha. So society, I think society, it's a little bit more difficult because, um, we all know that the world isn't fair as adults. You can see that you experience good times, bad times. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but that's being, pre that's, that's being measured up against some of the, you know, the systemic inequities that are being uncovered. Um, so, you know, this, when it's life or death, when it's war, you know, the seals, it's very easy for us to justify. This is the standard. This is the standard because lives are on the line. Gotcha. When you work at a big law firm and they have a culture that is actually unfair, you know, how are they justifying that? So I think right now we're, at, we're in the process of finding a balance for all this stuff. Gotcha. The harsh reality that the world isn't fair. Yep. Um, but, but, but putting that against the whole like participation tr trophy. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm answering your question. Oh. Yeah, no, for sure. And it seems like kind of what you're saying is just kind of, it just kind of depends on the context or the situation. Uh, yeah, I, I guess for me, it just seems like, uh, and it's always good to have an accurate kind of reflection of or accurate measurement of kind of maybe yourself and where you stand to like the greater good. Like, for example, for me, and again, this is going back to sports. When I played at Michigan State, I think I was a, a, a decent player and, you know, obviously was good enough to get to the Division One level. But when you start seeing some of these Le'Vi Bills and, these, these Javon Ringers and cats who are like, yeah. okay, I'm 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 good, but I'm not I'm not NFL good. It's another level to it. So I was able to kind of take a step back and say, okay, while I am good, uh, I'm not good enough to get to that level where the elite guys are. And uh, I, I guess that that was you know humbling for me, but it allowed me to kind of start to kind of rethink things and say, okay, let me kind of figure out this life after football thing because that's like the NFL maybe is not into, in, in, in my uh, future. So I, I had to kind of get a more or less a reality check on life where as opposed to taking a route like, oh, no, I'm still good enough where maybe it was clearly that, okay, you don't have that elite level of uh, this skill set that is going to take you to the to the next level. Uh, and, I, and I think in a lot of ways, it seems like that's uh, just having that reality check can be good in a lot of aspects in life. Uh, even, even, you know, whether it's, I, I don't know, just, you know, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I think, I think, but, you know, I, I guess, I guess what I, I, I just don't uh, want to join in the whole like, yeah, we're giving out participation. Yeah, for sure. Because it's because there's still there's still a lot of entities out and institutions that are operating yep. with the understanding with that competitive mindset and and with the understanding that life isn't fair and they're operating. You know, Alabama and Nick Staben. Yep. You know what that that why why is that program that program has got to be hellacious. Yeah. There's probably been some ugly moments. Yeah. For some players that that in their mind they got you know screwed over but you know what the, the the culture and the system that he's devised is so is so airtight that people who are trying to go after alabama football why, why can't they yeah so so that institution endures and so some of these so, some of these areas some of the people you know i don't want maybe the gentleman that's talking to the dac with you the other day but you know, I would ask them, hey, why can't your culture, why can't your institution endure the standards that you're holding? Why why do you feel like why do you find yourself having to make compromises and give out participation? You know, what are you lamenting about? Why isn't your organization tight enough to be able to withstand some of this social pressure that you're saying you feel? What? And you know, an example is I think public schools are having a really hard time. Yeah. It's not, it's it, it's a broken system. Parents, parents don't know what they want. Teachers don't know yep. what what's best, and you see it be exposed. There's a lot of private schools out there that are smaller. They appeal and and cater to a, a certain audience, yep. and they're able to endure uh, a lot of this social pressure without having to to you know make too many amends to things that they don't necessarily value yeah and I, and I think the older gentleman who I was talking to he he was more so I think it seemed like maybe saying the same thing that you were saying as far as hey this is he was maybe against it I should say as far as against the participation trophies and uh against this whole 
uh, environment or atmosphere that we're trying to create where it's like, hey, we're kumbaya, we're all the same. It doesn't matter if you can cut it or not or if you have this elite level of you know, mental power or athletic ability to get to the next level, it's still okay. It's going to be okay. Like, just, just, it's going to be okay as opposed to being like, no, you have to kind of push through. and It's just a, a standard set, uh, you know, making it clear from the beginning that it's a standard set, and if you can make that standard great, if you can't, then maybe you're not cut out for this particular thing. And it seems like he was just saying, hey, that's good for society, and them going to this whole participation trophy, and uh, it doesn't matter what you scored on the exam and whatever the case may be, that that is not good for society. So I don't know. I, I guess I was thinking – as you were kind of going through the whole uh, the buzz training and whatnot, I just kind of thought it'd be interesting to get your take on that. Yeah, I mean, you know, and and there's a lot of there's a lot of candidates that that quit. They yep. came, so that you know, I just I just I thought about that a lot, and I was very my mindset was very harsh towards the kid the candidates that quit in my class because uh, I didn't want to be associated with right. that m- mental weakness, but. There's things that that go on. You know, maybe maybe they felt they were treated unfairly or something like that. But they have to live with the decision that they made, and the SEAL communities, you know, it kind of drives on All right around it. So, you know, there's guys who have quit, and they have still, even in even in one of their weaker moments, having quit and give up on their dream, which was their choice. You know, no no one makes you ring the bell. Um, they can talk about it and see the opportunity that comes from that. Right. Other people, other people can't can't let up. They they want to blame the commu- the SEAL community, the un- unfair training, whatever it is, any excuse but themselves to justify the decision that they made. So, you know, a lot of it's on the individual. And um, hey, if, if I'm getting part, if we're giving out participation trophies, great, I'll take mine. But I'm also gonna be the hardest participant there on kind of mindset for sure. Yep, absolutely. And it still seems like whether, I guess, you kind of fail or succeed, I don't know, just having failed, obviously it's, you know, whatever you think about that is what you think about it, but I think it's still something like a valuable lesson to gain from that. Uh, just, yeah. you know, for life overall, you know, as you kind of continue to progress through things. You had told this story at the DAC, and I, I want to see if you uh, could, could, could tell it here, where you were talking about it was one part of the training, I think it was a diving, where you had to have a successful dive, and I think maybe you got like three tries or whatnot, and uh, I think maybe you, I'm not sure if it was on the second one. You yeah. essentially had like, like, drown. It had to be, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, for sure. Can you tell that story? I, I mean, I thought that was an interesting yeah. story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So after after the first phase of training, after you make it through Hell Week, uh, uh, the second phase of Bud's training is focused on on the water, and they teach you how to how to do combat diving. Before they start combat diving, they start you in a swimming pool and they do what's called pool competency. And it's a series of tests that you have to progressively pass. And the first test is to go underwater with the, with your tanks on and breathe, breathe underwater calmly, turn your tanks off and then turn them back on. So just don't freak out if you don't get air for a second, hold your breath and they, they start to walk you through procedures as you check your gear and then they add more complex problems. So the second, the second evolution might be go into water, turn your tanks off. You know, if someone turns your tanks off, maybe the instructor dives down and turns it off, take the tanks off of your body, look at them and then put them back on. So, okay. So now I have to do a little bit more while I'm holding my breath. All right. Uh, some of the later phases, it's okay. Take your tank, go down with a buddy, take your tanks off, and give them to him, and he's going to take his tanks off and give them to you. So now we're getting more coordinated. Okay, now we're right. blindfolded. So we just do it. Just how the culminating is uh, water competency or o- OC eight, they call it pool comp, and that's the the, the grand one, and that's a twenty minute test where they present you with every single problem you could ever encounter in hmm. it. And it really looks like you as a student crawling on the floor of the pool while instructors, one or two are above you with snorkels diving down and creating problems for you. And so a problem means ripping off your face mask, ripping out your mouthpiece, turning your air off, tying your hose in a knot, and then ripping off one of your shoulder straps. Then you come up. 